Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is called Embracing the Hoary End. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for what you're going to do through this sermon. Touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every spirit, Lord God. I pray that you will just abide with us. Speak to me and speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hi, guys. So I, I was in church. I was watching a youth um, thing to my church last week on YouTube. And I saw... Um, uh, who I consider my pastor talking to the youth, and that was a wonderful, a wonderful uh, youth thing he was talking about. Um, uh, pastor Stephen Furtick is brilliant when he's talking to the youth. His adult sermons are beyond brilliant too, but there's something special when he's talking to the youth. So anyway, I was watching this and noticing um, well, that he had gray hairs coming in. And now, and now I'm turning 40. So I was like, yes, show those gray hairs because I'm getting older myself. And, it's a challenge on every level. It's a, a challenge on a f physiological level, on a mental level, on every level you could possibly imagine. And now I'm just learning um, how to embrace the challenges and how to um, embrace who I'm becoming. In a culture that's so obsessed with youth and being young and looking young, um, I think age gets a bad rap. But with age, um, most of the time comes wisdom. And I don't think we value wisdom as much as we should. Um, I think we value what what is on. We say we say the right things. We say it's on what the, it's what the it's on it's on what's the inside that counts. It's what's on the inside that counts, not the outside. But but in the in a world today of plastic surgery and people trying to change themselves and people not knowing who they are and people just confused about, you know, uh, who they're attracted to and all these kind of different things. It seems like uh, we tend to embrace being younger and I think uh, uh, being almost 40 myself, I'll be 40 in September. Yay! I, I'm just learning to embrace each stage and each age that I pass through. Um, because um, if you don't embrace it, you start getting very uh, depressed and you know? Oh, I'm getting so old, I'm getting uh, wrinkles and whatever. Embrace those wrinkles, man. Embrace those wrinkles, girl, because you know what those wrinkles mean? Those wrinkles mean you've lived life. Those wrinkles mean that you have a lot to share. Your scars mean that you've been around a while, that you have that you have longevity, that you have, that you've been through something. 
and that you have things to share. And the, and the most frustrating thing is we don't treat people that are older with respect. And I think that, that um, people that are older, like seniors, have so much to share. I love talking to seniors because they've they've been through a lot of life. They've been through wars. They've been through marriage. Some of them have been through divorce. Some of them have been through seeing people murdered. Some, and they've still lived. Some of them have lived through poverty, and it's so awesome. And I think. Uh, um, our culture, Western culture, needs to get back to embracing um, age, whatever age and stage you are, embrace it. Like, I remember even being a little kid and so wanting to be old enough to see a rated R movie. I was thinking back. <laughs> I was thinking back to when I was nine or ten and saying, yeah, I've been to a bar. <laughs> or, uh, no, I think I said I've been to a casino and the person that I was talking to said, oh, really? They let you in? Because I was being a smart aleck. And I said, oh, yeah. And she said, I don't think you're old enough. <laughs> so I think that whatever age and stage you are, there's a, a, ten, a tendency to, walk, to want what's greener. But embrace your age. And I'm learning to do that. Like, as I'm getting older, I'm just, I'm just learning how much life I've lived, how much experience I've, I've had and experiences I've had and um, how much wisdom I now have to share um, with people. And that's what makes it so good, so good and worthwhile. Um, I think that you know, sometimes we think the grass is greener on the other side, but it really isn't. Like, because the people on the other side are wishing they had your grass, and you're wishing they had theirs. And I think we all need to embrace the age and stage we're in. I think with age uh, comes wisdom and perspective, and we need to, instead of wishing that we were younger, wishing for our past, we need to embrace the hoary head. And I will explain what hoary means. Uh, hoary is an old English word meaning the gray hair, the stages of life, the 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 age, and like it it, it meant wisdom. Um, in Proverbs, it talks about the hoary head, and it said, "Go to those with wisdom." Um, I I I love the Asian cultures. Where, where they uh, pray to their ancestors, because their ancestors, they believe their ancestors have wisdom, and I think that we um, we have we have um, uh, neglected uh, the. Old, older generation for so long thinking that they have um, nothing to share, but they do. They have a lot to share, and I think um, 
the, the, the Lord is commanding us who are older to share our wisdom, to sit down with our, our the young the young people and share what we have to share because we have a lot to share. We have a lot to do. There, there is so much that they need to learn from us. And I think what this world is missing now is that pe- um, for people for people to actually sit down with each other and and have dinner with each other and um, do things with each other and, so that they can talk and share wisdom. We are so uh, technologically advanced and inclined that we spend so much time on our phones and spend so much time on our devices and neglect to really talk to each other and share with each other. And then, like, you have a bunch of lost people because nobody's talking to them, nobody's sharing with them, and they're learning from their devices. And devices are cool. I have my computer and um, they have their place, the internet has its place, it's a wonderful thing, it's how I go to church every week, it's how I, um, how I do my business, my daily business, my banking or whatever, so it's wonderful, and social media is, is wonderful too, I can connect with anybody in two minutes, but it all, also, if it becomes your life, it can also be very dangerous. We need to get back to conversation. We don't, like, we live in a comments generation, but we need to get back to actually having conversation with people and sharing with people. And that's where... Um, the older generation in their 40s and, and in their in their forties and up can share their wisdom with the younger generation instead of in fighting your age and wanting to look younger, embrace it. Embrace your scars, embrace what you've been through. A lot of older people have been through so much. They have so much wisdom uh, that they're too embarrassed to share. But your daughter, your son, needs to hear that wisdom. Your daughter or your son needs to hear your story. I think um, the, the art and just the basic um, uh, just the basic art of storytelling is gone by the wayside and I just wish we could get that back. We could have um, grandmothers and grandfathers sit with their grandchildren and just tell them stories and uh, what happened when they were younger or whatever. Even stories that are devastating because your story can help someone. And I think we need to, inver- instead of pushing back on your agent or trying to, to turn back the hand of time, we need to embrace the fact that we are who we are. The wonderful thing about age is you is you gain a perspective with every experience. And, and I may be only almost 40, but within my four years, every experience I've been through, it gives me a perspective 
that I can now share with younger people or other people. So instead of fighting back on turning 40, I'm learning now to embrace everything about me, my age, my stage, my if I'm getting a few gray hairs, you know, even even my aches and pains, because that that all says I've lived life, and and most times, to tell the truth, living life isn't very comfortable, but with each experience in your life, whether good or challenging, uh, you gain wisdom. And not only wisdom to keep for yourself, but wisdom to share with others. And I think that's what's lacking um, in our society today, that we, we're not sitting down at tables and sharing wisdom and sharing experience. Uh, this youth thing I was watching, um, I love when, when, when Pastor Stephen Furtick and his wife, Pastor Holly Furtick was, they were sharing about life and how they did the dating thing and how, uh, how to study the Bible and how to, to do um, other things like that, just basic wisdom, and and also a key to conversation is listening. See, I think one of the other problems now are the generations are not listening to each other. We are so busy having our opinion. We need to get our opinion heard or whatever, that we're not listening to other people. We're not listening to understand. We're listening to defend. Um, uh, uh, Montel Williams always said, listen without defending and speak without offending. Or I think it was speak without offending and listen without defending. I think when we have um, a conversation with someone, especially we're, when we're upset, we're not listening to understand their point of view. We're listening with our argument ready. So we're not even hearing, we're talking but we're not communicating. Um, I've always said talking is just spewing words. Communicating is conveying a message that can be understood and used by the other person. Talking is just saying words, putting words in sentences. Communicating is to convey a message that can then be understood and digested and used by the other person. That is the difference. And we're not communicating, we're just talking. And that's a thing with with younger people or and people that are older and Older is not a bad word. We we say we say uh, we say we're fifty years young or whatever. Um, I I get the sentiments there, but there's no crime in being older. Being older means you live life and you gain the wisdom. And I've been around for for stuff and. And it's so brilliant to embrace stuff like that. And there are so many people from from the old, from the older and younger generation that can learn from each other 
that is so that it's unbelievable but we're not um, communicating to understand we're talking to get our opinion and, and our point across and we're not, some of us are not open to learning the generations can teach things to each other um, the the older can learn from the younger and the younger can learn from the older the younger can take things from the older generation and the older generation can take things from the younger generation and if we put those together it will create a new dynamic system that will be unstoppable in every area whether it be medicine whether it be music whether it be anything and i think that it is time that we stop talking that the uh, older generation stop talking at the younger generation and the younger generation stop talking at stop fighting against the older generation and come together and hear each other's opinion and come up come up with something new and um, I think sometimes with age comes a lot of challenges when it comes to physical things I know when you get older <laughs> for me, things are starting to hurt. Um, not, not in a very real way, but sometimes, I shouldn't say hurt, I should say get a little slower. Things that used to um, be fast are now coming to me a little slower and things are starting to slow down a little bit as I'm getting older but that's okay and I I'm just learning to embrace um, this new part of my life and I can't wait to see what God has in store instead of mourning what things used to look like, things used to be like. I'm now learning to embrace what things are now. And a lot of people with age, um, they like to live in the past. Oh, things used to be like that, things used to be like that. Um, I'm, I'm just here to say your life is not over. Your good years are not behind you. They're ahead of you. And whatever God has in store, it's going to be greater at this age than it ever was in your 20s. And I just, I just know that God has something great in store for me. And the, and the thing, the thing about it is though, Sometimes I look at my life and say, oh, I don't have the career that she does, or I'm not married yet, or I'm still, I'm still I'm living in the same place that I've always been living in, and whatever. Um, sometimes uh, the age what gets people that are getting older is comparison because you look at yourself at your age and you look at everybody who is also your age and think you are less than i'm here to tell you you are not less than you are doing what you're supposed to be doing you are living the way you're supposed to be living you are you are um, in the stage of life you're supposed to be at. Don't look at other people who are your same age or 
or around your same age, just stay the course that you're supposed to be on. Because the thing about comparison is you don't know what they had to do to get where they are. And sometimes you will be tempted to actually um, look at people that are your same age and think, oh my God, they're so far. But you, but you don't see what's behind the scenes. You don't see that, yes, they got married in their 20s, but now they're headed towards divorce. And you don't see that, yes, they had their good, that great job, but they hardly sleep. And they eat fast food because they don't get home cooked meat meals. We tend, we tend to see as human beings the brightness of somebody's career, but we don't know what they did to get that. We don't know what they had to sacrifice. So run your race and understand that for your age, you're right where God wants you. Let me, let me, let me say that again. For your age, you're right where God wants you. Whether you're 25, 35, 45, 55, and God can show up at any any time. There are there are visionaries that are older and they're wondering, will this ever happen? And God is still giving you that vision of whatever He wants you um, to do, and you're wondering, will this ever happen? And the Lord. The Lord wants me to say, yes, it will. Just hold tight. It's never too late. God is still working on you. God is still on the job. And while I was watching this youth thing, um, Pastor said something very uh, brilliant. He said, it's not he said to the young people, don't focus on what you want to do. Focus on who you want to be. And I would say that to my my people that are uh, 40 plus. Don't focus on who, what you want to do. Focus on who you want to be and what you want to do will follow that. Focus on your character. I was watching this this show called Married at First Sight. I I was watching season one on YouTube and I I saw this one couple, she was so uh, not into uh, the looks of a person, but the guy was so sweet. And I was thinking, thank God I, I'm 40. And because when you get older, you understand that first looks and sex appeal fade. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Looks and sex appeal fade. Looks and sex appeal fade. When you're looking for a partner, you want to find someone that coincides with you, that compliments you on a character level. Not on a looks level, because looks are great for attraction and sex, but none of those things matter. 
when your mother's in the hospital dying of cancer, when you've lost your job and you don't know where the money's coming from. You want someone who will stick with you through thick and through thin and through someone who will accept your flaws because God knows we all have flaws, but we, but we, but we all, but the problem is people are looking for people who are hot and sexy, but those people who are hot and sexy may not have the character to go along with that hot and sexiness. So when trouble hits, and trouble will hit in any relationship, they will be gone like a bad habit. And you will be left there thinking, what do I do? So for me, I want someone of substance and, and character in my life. I want someone who can deal with the messy things of my life and deal with the, the ups and downs and pitfalls of my disability. Um, deal with the crappy moments of my life, both literally and figuratively. Um, I, not to say that attraction isn't important, but it should be at the bottom of the list. Character should be first, because it's so, it's someone's character who will carry you through um, the relationship pitfalls, and that's what age brings you. Age brings you experience and and to, to know to look for character and not just looks because looks can fade but character is forged in steel character lasts yes can people change Yes, they can change, but it's best to be looking for someone of character. So that's why, that's why, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. That's why I don't respond to uh, uh, men, men sending me pictures and, oh, you're beautiful and whatever. No, I don't respond to that. Show me who you are. Show me who you are, and then we'll talk. Tell me that you like what I'm saying versus uh, you you like my smile or whatever. And that's not to tell people uh, to pick me up. Please don't. This is just a side note. Please don't send me uh, messages like that or pictures on Facebook. I I won't respond because I don't I don't play that way. <laughs> We're just not gonna I'm just not gonna do that. Um, send me messages if you like what I'm saying or if you you know you, you know you like what's inside of me and my substance. Uh, don't send me messages about, well, don't send me pictures or I like your smile or nope, I won't respond to you. I'll probably block you because that stuff scares me. So anyway, j just a side note. Um, but so, that's what comes with age, substance, because every experience you go through adds to your substance, whether it be good or challenging, 
because I'm coming to the belief now that no experience is bad. They're just challenging. And even the challenging ones as to as to your substance. And I think that it with age properly understood, you're supposed to get wiser. You're supposed to become people of substance. But chronological age doesn't always mean uh, physical age because some men my age at 40, they're still acting like they're 15. And some men at 25, um, have the maturity of someone 55. I think it's, I think age is more about what you've gone through and everything you've gone through teaches you something. And all the good and, and challenging parts of my life, I can say now, I wouldn't change it. I, it was hard when I went through it, but I wouldn't change it. And I think if you embrace the challenges of your age and just walk with confidence at whatever age and stage you are and stop mourning the age that you are now and just start embracing it and being confident and knowing that your life is not over at 40 plus. Your life is not over at 40 plus. Your life is just beginning and God has so much for you. They, they say life begins at 40, life begins at 50. I would say life begins whenever God says it does. I'll say that again. Life begins whenever the Lord says it does. Because the Lord, Jesus, if you look at the scripture, Jesus was in obscurity for 30 years. Like we see him as a baby, but we don't see him again until 30. And then 33, he went to the cross. So all that time until 30, well, we do see him a bit at 12 in Luke, but for the most part, we, we, he's born as a baby and we don't see him at, until 30. All those years were years of development. And every year of development is different for everybody. So all those years are of, obscure, of, of obscurity that you feel you're hidden and not being seen. Those are years of development of character. God is trying to develop you. I did a sermon years ago that's, that was called The Dark Room. And I talked about the time of development, how pictures, when they're taken, uh, they have to sit in a dark room to, to develop. See, I believe that God takes a picture of you, but then you have to, the picture doesn't cl come clear right away. You have to sit in a room gain experiences, uh, uh, sit in the positive, gain positive and negative experiences until that picture comes clear. God has been showing you all your life a picture of what he wants it, it to be like, or oh, of the kind of person he wants. He's developing you into, and and he's been putting you in a, in the dark room, not because he doesn't like you, 
not because you just want people to see, because that's a room of development. Jesus had to be developed for 30 years. And you're, and you're complaining because, because people don't see you at 16 or 25 or whatever. The Lord is developing me. That's a time of development that the Lord is using to develop you. Embrace the time of development. Don't fight against it. You can either, two things you can do with development. You can embrace it. You can say, okay, God, you're developing me. Or you can fight against it. And then when you fight against it, you'll, you'll not get anything out of it, and you'll be there longer. But when you embrace it, you'll you'll come out better because you'll embrace every circumstance, every challenge of your life. And that's the most amazing thing ever. And the people that have been embracing their development for years, the Lord is going to release you. And when he releases you, watch out, world, here you come. And just know that whatever age and stage you are, God is God. Your life is not over at a certain chronological age. Your life is only over when the Lord takes you to heaven. That's when your life is over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to embrace the Holy Spirit, how to embrace all the um, pitfalls of life, aches and pains of life, all the challenges of life, and use them for development and how to, how to learn and pick up what we need to for our next level. Thank you. Thank you. Break every chain that says people that are older are no good. They're just coming into their own at whatever age and stage that you've, um, that you've set for them. I thank you. I love you. Okay, guys. See you next week. Bye.